you brothers and elders and youngsters, whenever we prepare for a joyous occasion, an occasion which we are hoping to seek some happiness from, the nature of that occasion is that we prep for it. There's a certain level of preparation that goes behind it in order for that event to become successful. It is the natural setup of an event. No one goes into their wedding on the day of the wedding and says, hey, where's the food? They've already ordered the food. No one goes into an exam saying that, oh, I didn't know that there was going to be an exam today. Any event that is worth succeeding in, people prepare for it. And that prep then extends within that event and it makes it a successful event. Anything that we do in life requires some form of preparation. Every single one of us consider this blessed month of Ramadan that is dawning upon us to be a month of, of joy, a month of peace, a month of comfort. And we enter it every single year echoing the same statement. Wow, it's already here. It's already here. How did it come so fast? I wasn't ready. I didn't realize it's already Ramadan. I didn't know it's already here. It's so quick. It was so quick because there was no prep for it. We entered it flat-footed. And when a person starts a race flat-footed, there is no way they can catch up. Regardless of how fast they run, they started flat-footed. And hence, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with the month of Sha'ban. Because this month of Sha'ban, Ibn Hajj al Asqalani rahimahullah says, why is it called Sha'ban for? He says, Sha'ban, it's called Sha'ban because it's in between two great months. In the Islamic calendar, the month before Sha'ban is Rajab, a month in which no one can fight. And the month after is the month of Ramadan. And in between comes this blessed month. This is why in the Arabic language, when you have two mountains on both sides, that valley which is in between is called Sha'ab. It's called Sha'aban because it's connecting two beautiful months. One day Usama ibn Zayd an, who was a son of Zayd ibn Haditha, who was the adopted son of the Prophet wasallam, who the Prophet loved very dearly, he comes to him and he says, Ya Rasulullah, why do I see that you fast in this month of Sha'aban more than you fast in any other month of the year? min tusumu min shuhur, Like more than you fast in any other month of the year. Why do I see you fast so much in this month? And the Prophet responded. And this was his observation. He was watching and he noticed that every single year the Prophet would increase his ibadah in the month of Ramadan. And the Prophet responded by saying to oh, Usama, this is a month الَّذِي يَغْفُلُ النَّاسُ عَنْهُ that most people are negligent of. This is a month that most people are negligent of. They are heedless of it. And in the commentary of this hadith, Ibn Qayyim says that it is within, and I find this statement to be fairly profound. He says that it is within the negligent and the ignored times in which the pious people earn nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll say it again. He says, it is within those unknown, heedless, negligent times in which most people don't recognize the value of, through which people gain nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So an extension of that statement is, people ju don't just gain nearness of Allah through Ramadan. Because no one's heedless in the month of Ramadan. Or most people are not. People don't just gain nearness of Allah through the day of Jum'ah. Because everyone is there for the day of Jum'ah. People don't just gain nearness through Eid. These are not times of, of neglect. These are not times that are ignored. But rather the times that are ignored are the ones that can give us the most closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he explains what are those times. This is why we have what we call tahajjud, the night prayer. Because most people are sleeping at that time. Most people are negligent at that time. Most people are not observant in any form of ibadah during those times. So now if a person starts doing ibadah during those times, 
It allows him to gain nearness much faster to Allah. It's like a shortcut. You don't have to do everything. If you just do this, it allows you to take leaps over people. Similarly, is the month of Sha'ban, he says. People don't generally recognize the value of this month. Because we are clouded, or we are, the, 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 the month of Ramadan clouds the beauty of this month because it's so great. And then the Prophet continues and he says, وَهَذَا الشَّهْرِ أَلَّذِي يُرْفَعُ فِيهِ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And this is the month in which all of our a'mal go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our a'mal that we perform throughout the year are presented to Allah in a very formal way, because of course Allah knows everything, but in a formal way in the day, in the month of Ramadan, in the month of Sha'ban. And then he says, وَأَنَا أُحِبُّ أَنْ يُرْفَعُ عَمَلِي وَأَنَا صائم. And I would prefer that my actions are raised to Allah and they are presented to Allah whilst I am fasting. Whilst I am in the form of ibadah. While I am doing something good. Aisha anha says that we will look at the Prophet وَيَصُومُ وَنَقُولُ لَا يُفْتَرُ We will see the Prophet fasting to such an extent that we would say this man never eats. Then we would see him eating till a point we would say this man never fasts. Except for in the month of Sha'ban because he would fast the entire month. In the narration of Bukhari it says he would فَأَنَّهُ كَانَ يَصُومُ شَعْبَانَ كُلَّهُ In the narration of Muslim it says that he used to fast majority of the month of Sha'ban. So dear brothers and youngsters, the idea is how can we truly benefit from the month of Ramadan? Or how can we truly benefit from any occasion if we don't come prepared for the event? How can you have a successful event if we don't have the necessary means prepared for it? We end up just being there. Just being there means that month passively passes us by. Without us even knowing, it starts, and before we know it, it ends. Because we didn't prepare for it. When people prepare for weddings and events, they prepare one year before. Because they want every single thing, every detail, every trivial thing in that wedding to go good. So in order for us to benefit from the month which is falling upon us, it is necessary for us to take advantage of the month that comes before it. You can't win the race if you start late. And the way we look at it is, yeah, well, I fasted in the month of Ramadan. Well, I prayed taraweeh in the month of Ramadan. I did so much good. The idea is not simply doing good. The idea is how much could I have done if I prepared just a little bit more? If I prepared a little bit more. Right? And that's why Allah blessed us with the month of Sha'ban. So we can start that prep a little early. If we are people that plan, inshallah, in the month of Ramadan, to start coming to the masjid on a daily basis, if we don't start from now, it will not happen. If we want our children to start occupying their time in tilawa and spending their days in the masjid, or at least coming to the masjid, it is absolutely necessary for us to start that now. So in Ramadan they start. Because before we know it, the first 10 days of Ramadan are finished. And then the second 10 days, we're like, oh my God, I don't know what to do anymore. And then the last 10 days, I start preparing for Eid. So Allah gave us Sha'ban, telling us, let's start that prep early. Let's get that ball rolling. Before the time comes that we're flat-footed, let's get that ball rolling so we can enjoy this month. So we can sit and benefit from that month. And we can take from the fruits of it. Or else we will be caught flat-footed. And hence, the Prophet ﷺ used to fast the entire month. In some narrations, at least the last 15 days, the Aisha anha says that he would, be, he would turn to another gear in the month of Sha'ban. So whatever gear we want to be in in the month of Ramadan, we should really start doing that now. Or else, in the month of Ramadan, we will not hit that gear. So whatever our plans are, whatever tasks that we have sat down and, and written for ourselves for the month of Ramadan, let's start that in the month of Sha'ban. The scholars like Mujahid and Ikrama used to say, when Sha'ban would enter, we would call it the month of Qurra. The month of reciting the Qur'an. 
in this month we would not do anything but just recite the Qur'an. We would close our doors for questions. We would tell our families that we're not available. Because now it was the prep, it was the planting of the seeds for the month of Ramadan. In order for the, tr- in order for the tree to bear fruits, one has to plant it in a way that it can actually grow. In order for Ramadan to bear fruits for us, we plant our seeds in the month of Sha'ban. And this becomes that month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also decides, according to some narrations, the entire year's qadr for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا فِي لَيْلَةٍ مُبَارَكَةٍ That we reveal this book in the blessed night. According to many scholars, like Imam Qurtabi rahimahullah, he quotes that blessed night is the 15th of Sha'ban. فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ On that night, everything is decided. Hence the Prophet reflected that in his statement where he said that my a'mal are raised in the month of Sha'ban, so I want my a'mal to be raised while I am fasting. So now what can we do in this month of Sha'ban before the month of Ramadan starts? Ibn Qayyim ends off his statement by saying that we should start three things. We should start these three things in the month of Sha'ban in order for Ramadan to be beneficial for us. Number one, we need to start some tilawa of the Qur'an. At whatever level, it may be 5 minutes a day, maybe 10 minutes a day, it just has to be an increase. And if we start with that, in the month of Ramadan, it will increase a little more. And then it will increase a little more. That's a natural, that's a natural progression of life. Wherever you are, you hope to increase. So we start a little bit more in Sha'ban, and hopefully Ramadan will add a little bit, some more juice to it. The second thing he says is that we need to start fasting just a little bit. So if we're not used to fasting, the month of Sha'ban blesses us with the 15th of Sha'ban, in which these three days are also known as Ayyamul Bil, 13th, 14th, and 15th. We should try to fast on the 13th, 14th, and 15th of Sha'ban. If we cannot, then at least on Mondays and Thursdays when we are, when we are able to. And the third thing that we need to start to some, to some degree is praying some nawafil, and specifically referring to tahajjud. If we are able to do these three things, he says the month of Ramadan will be extremely beneficial for us. No one starts a race flat-footed. No one goes into an exam not preparing for it. No one plans a joyous event not prepping for it. Every one of these significant things in life come with a certain level of preparation. And dear brothers, that certain level of preparation dictates the conclusion of that event. If that certain level of preparation is weak, then the conclusion of that event will also be lacking. If the certain level of preparation is extensive, then the conclusion will also, be fo- will also follow that prep. We all know that, we just need to extend that into the reality of the month of Sha'ban and not ignore it, it falls in between the two great months of Rajab and Ramadan, like the valley in between two mountains. In order for us to climb the mountain of Ramadan, we must spend the time of Sha'ban, which is the valley, in planting our seeds, so when it comes, we are ready and not caught flat-footed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those that can take full advantage of this blessed month, start opening, start filling up the masajid like we do in the month of Ramadan, start sending our kids to the masjid like we do in the month of Ramadan, start fasting like we do in the month of Ramadan and inshallah we bear the fruits of Ramadan when it enters upon us